Dr. Jaffe, how do I respond to people who have had stool IgA positive for anti-gliadin or serum but come up non-reactive on the LRA? These people have been avoiding gluten for a while, so assuming that is also some impact. But my understanding is that the LRA identifies substances that are directly toxic to the white blood cells. How would you best explain this to a patient? When it forgets, when your immune defense and repair system forgives and forgets, you become tolerant and you actually have a memory antibody, a memory of the prior exposure, a memory antibody called an IgG <clears throat> that is neutralizing a beneficial, helpful IgG antibody that, or IgA or IgM, but mostly IgG and IgA. And these IgA and IgG antibodies can live as long as the person survives. And if they're exposed to something foreign that is identical antigenically, that is physiochemically the same, it's trapped by the beneficial neutralizing antibody. So yes, if you measure serum antibodies or mucosal antibodies or stool antibodies, you cannot distinguish helpful from harmful. You cannot distinguish neutralizing from complement fixing. You cannot distinguish good from bad. And that is confusing. So first I recommend not doing those tests because they're confusing. And then if people have had those tests, I recommend explaining to them that it is confusing. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's confusing to the point where functional information and functional immunology is lost and fear and misunderstanding remain. So let's clear away the fear and misunderstanding. Let's clarify that harmful is harmful and helpful is helpful. Harmful complement fixing antibodies are detected by the LRA by ELISA ACT test. In contrast, neutralizing, protective, helpful, beneficial antibodies do not set off lymphocyte responses. So the reason we developed the LRA by ELISA Act was because we and you need to know the difference between good and bad, the difference between helpful and harmful, the difference between complement fixing versus neutralizing in regard to antibodies. So you can have a helpful antibody like an IgA or maybe an IgG, and it will not come up on ELISA Act LRA testing because it's helpful, not harmful. Now you wanna know what's harmful and you wanna be able to uh, deal with, to neutralize, uh, to digest, to make go away the harmful. But when you confuse the helpful with the harmful, you make the harmful more accessible. So please understand the difference between helpful neutralizing antibodies like IgA or IgG and the functional LRA by ELISA ACT procedure that only detects the harmful and not the helpful. And so they're not the same. In fact, I know many people who with the best of intentions have ended up on a nutritionally deprived diet because they were avoiding so many beneficial foods, so many foods to which they had a neutralizing protective response, that they just weren't getting good nutrition. Nutrition begins in the kitchen, it begins in the whole foods and the quality of the foods that you eat, but you want the foods to be those that you can digest, take in, assimilate, and eliminate <clears throat> without immune burden. So let us step into the 21st century where we have functional tests and procedures that have been validated over decades and published in multiple outcome successful studies, statistically meaningful differences, starting from best standard of conventional care and applying this more personalized and predictive approach. So let's join the 21st century recognizing the challenges but rising to the opportunity so that we too can be well and happy for a full, long life, even in the 21st century.